welcome to the chaos sector. We continue to expose the truth, can't allow these hoaxes to get out of control. Let's go ahead and break it down. We now know that shooter was kicked out of Tops the day before that shooting. And tonight, the employee who says she was the one who did it is speaking out. These are professional liars. They can create a backstory out of thin air. All of a sudden, there are all these elaborate details about the suspect. He was kicked out of the supermarket a day prior. Funny, because Mr. Lewis never mentioned anything about the suspect being kicked out of the store. If you recall, Mr. Lewis claimed they had a lengthy conversation, and he even bought him a drink. He then claims that the suspect got into his vehicle and drove off. Now since he would be leaving, this would mean he was kicked out of the store prior to the conversation with Mr. Lewis, right? Just poking more holes in the hoax, let's continue. Hold on, before we do so, take a look at the female reporter. Those eyes explain it all, deception. And examining more, it appears to be a man as well. They're all sick. New at 11 tonight, 10 TV's Olivia Eugenio is in Buffalo, outside of the tops after speaking with the operations manager. It's amazing how simple decisions could massively change your life, how one choice could make all the difference. And for Sean L. Harris Teague, that couldn't be more true. Yes, does matter sex. Is this a smile of nervousness? Is she camera shy? Well, it is, but it's about participating in the hoax and being camera shy. Understand? Let's be honest here, black people in general are not used to media cameras as much as others. So when they participate in these hoaxes, they stick out like a sore thumb. They don't quote, act, as well as other races, so their emotional state, either it be crying or angry, is not authentic. Meaning, you shouldn't do it, if you can't pull it off. But then again, money is the motivation. A matter of seconds to ask a question. It's like, well, before you take us home, um, we want to get some snacks and we have snacks at home because they didn't want to cook. <laughs> A few seconds on Saturday that leaves Sean L. Harris Teague with a what if. Notice how this piece of shit reporter has narrated over the witness's story. She is speaking, explaining what unfolded. Why would you drown her out when she is explaining key detail? Because that point in the interview has oddities in relation to the so-called day of the shooting. And it's about suggestive programming, conditioning the viewers. That is unprofessional. She should be fired. Heck, all news for that matter. Let's continue. So we went back into the store, and right before we went into the store, the, the first lady who got um, shot was coming across the parking lot. But Sean L's what if goes much deeper. A lot of ifs, if, um, if and what ifs key hit my mind. What if he was angry, he could have hide it, he could have did it Friday night. This is pathetic, absolutely pathetic. All incoherent, mumbling, the script given to this lady apparently was too complicated to remember, because she is stuttering, struggling to remember what to say. Let's listen again, and notice how she is trying to remember her script, but just can't execute in front of the camera. A lot of if, if, um, if and what if key hit my mind, what if he was angry, he could have hide did what he could have dated Friday night. A lot of ifs, um, ifs, and what ifs, ifs and what ifs. Ifs is the same as what ifs, she is crumbling, can't remember the script at this point, and is trying so hard to stay focused. And of course, the reporter narrates to save her, explaining the script the correct way to the viewers. Nonsense. What if he had been angry when she asked him to leave the same top store Friday night after two customers complained? More nonsense. What if the suspect was so angry after being told to leave the store that he returned the next day and murdered 10 black people? Yeah, that makes sense. Trying to connect this day of events with the next day has a weak script. You could have created a backstory such as this, ready? The suspect came to the top supermarket a day prior and was doing a bit of shopping. He got into an argument with a shopper about skipping in front of him. A group of black people shout out, go back to your town you racist piece of shit, stop killing our people. He gets into a physical altercation with one black guy, then jumps in his car and leaves. Comes back the next day and shoots 10 black people. Now I just created that script right now, and it's more convincing than what this lady is spewing out. But they don't really care about the inconsistencies in their scripts, it's all about the quantity of the hoaxes being presented, not quality. Let's finish this garbage. And I had met him in the meat department area and asked him could he lead a store, that he can't be soliciting in the store asking people for change and because he's making the customers feel uncomfortable. And I asked him, um, can he please leave the store? He said okay, and I noticed when he was leaving the store, you know, his eyes was wondering, he was wondering, you know, looking around the, um, as he was leaving. Yeah, that's how it went. He said, okay, meaning he didn't put up any resistance to your request. I would assume, since he is a white supremacist, 
he would have resisted, or caused a problem, right? Maybe even said something insulting about you as a black person, right? Cops would be called, and he is told to leave the premises. Comes back the next day, and shoots ten black people. And there is another script, that is more convincing in the hoax's backstory. But notice how she claims to observe the suspect observing those surroundings. And I noticed when he was leaving the store, you know, his eyes was wondering, he was wondering, you know, looking around the, um, as he was leaving. Yeah, nice try. This is to establish a suspicion linked to the motive of planning to murder black people in this supermarket the next day. So, of course, looking back on the so-called shooting, she would say to herself, I knew he was up to something. They need better script writers. This is garbage. Chanel says the shooter was wearing the exact same clothes on Friday as he was Saturday when she saw him again. So now, along with what if, Chanel is left with what now? I, I can't sleep. I still plan. I, I can still see it with my eyes closed here. And any loud noise just make me just jump because I can still hear the gun shooting. Um, people screaming, people crying. Wow, you're that traumatized. It doesn't seem like it. You've been smiling and laughing in this interview consistently. If you have been traumatized by something, smiling and laughter are not the majority of emotions you display when being interviewed about a traumatizing event. You would more than likely cry due to the impact of the so-called shooting you experienced at your place of employment. But of course, crying is not easy when there is nothing to cry about. Can't pretend to cry, it won't work. And her painful memories just won't stop. It's just a heart. Chanel tells me that Top's employees are being offered extra help. She says she's been able to talk to someone both Monday and Tuesday and plans to go again on Wednesday. She says she has not decided if she will continue to work at the store. Really? Of course, mentioning her decision about employment at the supermarket, she slipped up and was going to mention how she planned on either leaving that job or staying. But she had to wait for that point. The reporter wasn't there yet. Funny as hell. Listen closely as she jumped too far in her script then remembered to stay at the point of explaining how much trauma she endured. Chanel is left with what now? I, I can't sleep. I still plan. I, I can still see it with my eyes closed here. And any loud noise just make me just jump because I can still hear the gun shooting. I, I can't sleep. I still plan. You still plan what? Let me guess. You still plan on working there after they deposited that fat check into your bank account. No, you plan on quitting and getting into politics? Or maybe, opening up your own business. Doesn't matter, just another crisis actor with no integrity. But let's go back over something, the portion where the reporter narrated over her statements. Listen carefully. So we went back into the store, and right before we went into the store, the, the first lady who got um, shot was coming across the parking lot. But Chanel's what if goes much deeper. Now we assume she is describing what unfolded, the day of the so-called shooting. We come to this conclusion, because she mentions a lady who had been shot, coming across the parking lot, right? If you listen carefully, she continues to explain what happened, but the reporter is narrating over that explanation. So we went back into the store, and right before we went into the store, the, the first lady who got um, shot was coming across the parking lot. So. But Chanel's what if goes much deeper. Why the fuck would you drown out the most important aspect of the interview, which is the witness describing what she saw the day of the so-called shooting? This is because, if she was physically in the parking lot when the suspect started his so-called rampage, we have to know exactly where she was, including individuals who were with her. That requires an explanation of course. Since he would be on a rampage, targeting black people, chances he would spot them are likely, which would eliminate her even being interviewed. If she and others who had accompanied her, saw the first person get shot, this means they had to have been in view of the suspect, because more than likely he wasn't actually shooting his gun yet. Meaning, they were visible to him, regardless of where they were in the parking lot, because they saw the lady get shot. Remember, he is targeting black people, he is on a rampage, just like he was observing his surroundings in the store as she suggested, he would be observing his surroundings in the fucking parking lot, looking for black people to shoot. They decided to edit that out, because she already had a problem remembering her script, couldn't afford for her to slip up in explaining the actual day of the so-called shooting, and how she avoided being spotted by the suspect in the parking lot. It's not a huge parking lot, because the supermarket is not that big. He would have spotted them, and shot them. So of course, we can't have her go into details about the day of the incident. Okay John, that's the end of the interview, cut. In Buffalo, Olivia Eugenio, 10TV News. This is the Chaos Sector.